In this quick tip, we're going to talk about how to put a button at the bottom of your Power Apps Gallery. So it turns out that you know sometimes you guys are like, hey, you know, it'd be really neat. All these things you've shown us. How do I get a button at the bottom of a gallery when I don't want a button on every item, just at the bottom? Yeah, sounded like a fair question, so I thought I'd answer it. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today. We're going to talk about putting a button at the bottom of your gallery. So it turns out you guys are big fans of galleries. You all have these little videos that talk about little tricks with it. So I thought we'd go explore an old concept where we talked about making a gallery an uh, editable concept, right? We want to use the gallery to do inputs in a dynamic data model. So that's an older video that we did, I think about seven months ago. So I don't know, link up there. So we're going through the app and you're like, well, what is it? It's that one. But what we want to do here is I want to be able to take input via the gallery. So we have dynamic input. And, but I want you to have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the gallery to submit that data. Uh, the other place this will come up is sometimes people want you to review. So they don't even want to input. They just want you to have to scroll through and like acknowledge you saw everything in the gallery. And so we need to put a button at the bottom of there. So I'm going to show you how I've done that for the can. I've probably done this for about 10 different customers at this point. So anyway, let's switch over take a look. So here's our chore report app. And remember this was the idea that we could just dynamically have different chores. And then, you know, we have different options in our drop downs. We have a lot of different stuff going on here with our data. Um, but you know, it's a real easy interface for our users to be able to self maintain. They can add their own chores in this case, and they just show up because this is a filtered list of all the chores um, available. And we take the input and we store it in a different list and relate them back. Right? Like I said, there's a video for that. We're not going to cover that. But one of the things I found with the customers that actually implemented this is a lot of times they're like, hey, your save button's over here. And if the people aren't paying attention, they forget to scroll down and answer all these. Ew. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to move the save button to the bottom. And you know, as you know, right, right now this gallery is showing a collection. And there's really no way to say, hey, gallery, have a special thing when you get to the bottom. And there's no way to trigger, right? We all wish that there was a way to just, you know, have a, like a, an event fire when you hit the bottom of a gallery. It doesn't work that way. So what I have done for these people is I go and I look, all right, well, let's look at this cold chores. As you can see, it's kind of got some answers, some values. It's got a couple pieces of data in here. But what they wanted was they wanted, um, you know, we, we need to add a row. So to do that, I'm gonna go back where the gallery gets defined up here. And so after it gets defined, I end up doing something like this. Boom. And then I just say collect. So the collect function adds a row to an existing collection. So add something to cold chores. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a record and I'm just gonna set the title to something like button goes here, right? Something that is completely innocuous. Now, if the gallery or if the data set had other required columns, then I'd have to add those as well as bogus data. But this one title is the only required column. So to add a row, I need a title. All right. Now, nice thing here is that cold chores put all the chores in there. And then this will absolutely just always add the record at the bottom. Hint, hint, hint. So now I need this to refire. So we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And if we scroll to the bottom now, there's button goes here. I don't want button goes here. I want a button down here. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to do two things. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to the first row. We're going to add that button that we we're just talking about. We're not going to bother making it pretty right now. I'm going to set it right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, button, you are only visible when if the this item dot title equals oh learn to type equals button goes here so then now it is only visible in the bottom one and so then the other thing that i will then do is i will just set this title because the title is set i'm just going to say title you're visible is going to be our button and our button is called button four. So button four dot visibles, but I don't want you to be visible when he is visible. I want you to be visible when it's not visible. So we're going to use the not operator out in front. So now the app looks exactly the way it did before, but at the bottom we have our button. What? 
And so then now that we understand our button, here's all of our code from before. So we'll just copy this text, the on select event here. We'll go find our little button four. I told you it was named button four. And we'll say, hey, on select, you do all those things. And then we can delete this button, right? Bye bye. There you go. And so then now we have our button. I probably would move it too because I don't like where I put it. And we'll just kind of drag it over here in the middle somewhere. There we go. So now you could add all the logic. You could also start to add things like this display mode if the answers aren't all filled out, right? So if all the answers still equal the single dash, which was kind of my default answer, you know, so you can add all your normal logic to this button, but you're only showing it at the bottom. So that way you know that in order to get to the button to submit their data, which is what they want to do so they can move on with their job, they got to scroll to the bottom of your gallery. Ta-da! So I thought that was a pretty neat little easy trick for you guys. Um, it comes up in a lot of our scenarios, not a lot, but anytime that we put in this data model, this dynamic data model, we always are gonna do that um, because it just, it just makes sense to have at the bottom. I have another customer where they have to like sign off that they reviewed a whole bunch of, they have to re review this report basically that someone did. So same type of thing. We put the acknowledgement button at the bottom of the gallery with the same trick. Now, it really only works with a collection the way that I've shown you here, but you know, you're gonna have to kinda you gotta take the good with the bad. Um, and that was the way that we were able to do it. If, if it didn't work that way, if I had to use an actual data source here, then I'd probably go make a bogus record in my data source with some weird title like that and do the same logic and put it in the data source. I haven't had to do that for any customers. We've always been working with collections, but I wanted to throw that for you as well. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. You got ideas, fun little twists that like you like to see. Like I love these little videos because just a, hey, I'm a little bit smarter from you know spending six or seven minutes with me this morning. So anyway, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.